<laughs> Thank you so much for joining us live today. Um, I want to tell the audience that we both are in Delaware, but due to the pandemic, we are not meeting face to face. Although one day I'd love to see you, meet you in person. Um, I recently discovered you, to be honest. Um, before I give the floor to you, I just wanted to introduce through my lens, my vision. And um, I discovered you around, I think, August. August, when, when I started uh, this journey of uh, being a parent mentor to the women who, who are major, majorly Urdu speaking and in uh, Pakistan or even in, in, in United States, but they connect with me on the level of the first language, which is Urdu. Urdu is my first language. I'm an immigrant from Pakistan. So um, yours was one of the first books that I came across and I studied and then I actually learned from it. And then I uh, did a book study uh, on YouTube with my audience and I loved, loved, loved the book. Then I came across your podcasts and I, and then I realized, okay, you've been around for some time. It's me just discovering you right now. And then what really excited me was that you are in Delaware. And I was like, yes, this is my local celebrity. <laughs> That's so funny. We'll have to go yeah. meet up for a walk some point yeah. in Wilmington in the middle. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Cool. So um, thank you so much again, Hunter, for your time. Um, you are extremely busy. I am a member of your Facebook group page as well. Um, and I see uh, how much work and effort and love and energy you put in there. Uh, so I'll give the floor to you and you take it from here. Uh, talk to the audience. <laughs> well, I'd love some questions. I think yes, that would be a great place to start. So uh, could you just introduce a bit about yourself? Sure, yeah, uh, okay. Um, so yeah, so I'm Hunter Clarkfield. I call, you know, on the Mindful Mama Mentor. And basically that means that, um, it doesn't mean I was like always amazing at any of this. No, 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 no. <laughs> it means that I was really, really struggling. And I, I went and found like the best tools in a lot of the different places and brought them in together in, in one place. And I really saw that like these certain, these two kind of worlds weren't speaking to each other very well. Yeah. You know, so I had been very interested in mindfulness um, since I was a teenager. Cause I was, uh, I was really kind of, um, you know, highly sensitive, a little bit emotionally unstable person. And um and so I, I had started learning about mindfulness and it brought me a lot of relief. And then it actually it brought me a lot more relief when I actually really, really practiced meditation. But, but in that, you know, that, that world was there and it had all these healing, powerful tools to help us like come into the present moment, to calm our reactivity, to be able to show up for the difficult things in life. Mm -hmm. And then I had kids, <laughs> I was like, Whew, like, oh my goodness, like talk about difficult things in life, you know, and I, I didn't want to, you know, I was parented in kind of an authoritarian way and I didn't want to parent my kids that way, but I had this like temper that kept coming forth and that was exactly what I didn't want. So I started like studying and learning like these peaceful parenting, conscious parenting techniques. But the problem was like a lot of them would start with kind of like, just pause and respond this way. <laughs> and I was like, but wait a minute, there is so much before step number one that needs to be addressed. So really it was like bringing together these two worlds to kind of like understand why this is in our nature when we don't want to yell, you know, we don't choose to yell and, and, and how we can help kids, you know, take care of their feelings and take care of our feelings and just evolve this whole thing rather than kind of blindly repeating the patterns of the past. That's, that's uh, definitely, um, that's true. That's true for all the parents. So when you speak, although I'm not into meditation and I'm not into yoga and anything, but uh, when I, when I read your book, it felt as if somebody was speaking to me it was there was nothing that was that i did not understand or that i was not going through and so i connected immediately with your message and i can say the same for the audience that took the course with me that they connected with you they understood you uh, they uh, they asked questions the same the similar way and then i directed you them to your podcast and i said okay find the answers there <laughs> so um so my my thing is how, and you talk about this in your book. And what, one of the things is that you talk from your perspective. 
you don't shy away from saying that I was never there, but I am going towards the more peaceful path. And then you, you claim, you know, you claim your journey, which is, which is very honest and authentic. And and difficulties around this. This is just part of their nature and they don't shame and blame themselves for having aggression because they're just animals, predators out in the wild. And so I was kind of exploring those ideas because these feelings is like, like anger with frustration were coming out in me and I didn't want those feelings. Like I didn't, I didn't want them, but it's just part of the nature. It's part of our, part of being human is to, is to have the whole full spectrum of all the feelings, right? And yeah. so when we can accept that in ourselves, then we are much more able to accept that in our kids. Does yeah. That make sense? Kind of like, that's kind of the link I, I, I see between my crazy, weird artwork and uh, raising good humans. <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful link. And it makes absolute sense because um, there is truth to it. There, there is truth to it. Subhanallah. So Alhamdulillah, that's, um, that's fantastic. Are you currently enrolling people in your coaching group, if I'm correct? Oh, yeah, actually, I do have um, a couple spots left in a small group coaching that uh, offering that I'm doing starting next Wednesday. Um, yeah, and it's just a kind of a small group and we're giving people the resources, the tools they need to, to, you know, I kind of think of it, I was thinking about it, like we're going into the winter, we're all, you know, we're all a little anxious about going into the winter, right? And we need more resources because we're going to have yeah. more challenges with this pandemic. We're not going to be able to go on walks with our friends or, you know, we may feel more isolated. So it's really about bringing the sisterhood together and giving people the tools they need as far as self-compassion, self-acceptance, mindfulness, all that stuff to go through that, that journey of that time and, and parent in such a way that they can offer that to their kids rather than the old harmful habits. Definitely. Okay, so I would like to ask you this. Uh, year 2020 has been, it has been what it has been. <laughs> and you do touch up on, upon that topic and you ask everybody at the beginning of your podcast, how are you doing? And it, it, it shows that you really are asking, like, how are you doing? So the, the previous coaching or the previous classes that you've done, the previous talks that you've done and the ones that you're doing now during the pandemic, during the past few months, could you tell me what difference you see? I mean, how high is the anxiety level? How has the parenting dynamic a bit, is it, has it been more harder or have the families come to more connectivity? Because um, I hear different stories. Some say we became closer as a family. Some mm -hmm. say that, uh, you know, it's really, really hard for us. We don't know how to handle this. And I think I th this is my opinion that partly it is because some of us are very um, taken care of in our lives, mm -hmm. in, our, in our businesses, in our works, etc. We don't have those financial burdens, those bills mm -hmm. to pay. That adds on to the parenting, um, you know, uh, pressures. So I would like to hear from you. What have you been seeing? What have you been experiencing? What do, what are parents telling you? I mean, I agree. There's a huge, like, divided privilege, like, with this. If you have the financial resources to, uh, to be able to, like, maybe have some help or to, you know, or to not worry about your job or to not have to go out into the world, right? It's you, maybe it's bringing you closer, but the truth is not for everybody. Everybody doesn't have as much time. And that's, that's a big thing. So like we kind of, the thing about our sort of like our nervous system is that that stress response, it can kind of build up. And if we don't, we don't, um, we don't do practice we don't give ourselves time for, for relief for stress relief, right? Then it's gonna, we're gonna be much more likely to yell at our kids, snap at our kids, be frustrated. I mean, people are doing different things and just that, that sense of like worry that is kind of pervasive that can get into everything. And that, that can be a little like out, um, debilitating for some people, like really debilitating worry, even if you don't necessarily have to have that. It, it, um, it's like a, sometimes people almost feel more responsible, like if they're worrying, but mm -hmm. it's actually debil debilitating them and keeping mm -hmm. them from living life. So um, yeah, I mean, in the mindful parenting membership, we've had a lot of conversations about school, about when to fit in any kind of time for yourself to like how to have conversations with your partner about 
um, about sharing the load now that things are different, right? Now that everybody's home and, and we're all doing these different things. So, so yeah, we're, we're really looking at that. I mean, it's a lot to hold. I mean, no matter who you are, we're living with like a, a, you know, the, the pandemic health crisis an economic crisis from the pandemic, a, a, the a climate crisis still. Yes. And, and, uh, you know, and a, a racial justice crisis. So it's like, yes. it's like, whoo, 2020, you know, like we're all <laughs> holding all this stuff. So we need more, like their challenges are greater. So we need greater resources to kind of meet those challenges. Yeah, that's, that's true. So um, then my next question would be, uh, can you help us with some of the resources? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so what I, the intersection of my teaching actually is like, um, Actually, I can uh, I can share it with you if you want. I happen to have this image right up, which is like this framework. And I guess awesome. you want me to, you want to see it? Yeah, I'll, definitely. I'll share my. You can let me share a screen, and I will. Do yeah, it. yeah, you're a panelist. You can share the screen easily. Okay. Oh no, I haven't. I can't. But that's okay. Let's not get too bogged down into. It's basically. Okay, I did it. I did it. Uh, old panelists. Oh, okay, good. All right, we got it. Uh, I was like, oh no, <laughs> technology. So basically, like this is the tools that these are the tools that I skills that I teach, right? Like it goes between mindfulness, self compassion, and skillful communication, right? So we, a lot of us, like as parents, were like, let's do this skillful communication piece because I really care about my kids and I want to do this thing, but it can be very superficial without these other pieces, right? Without that kind of inside out change mm -hmm, where mm -hmm. we really need that inside out change. Yeah. And so why mindfulness is such an amazing piece about this is like research proven in, 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 in met again and again and again and again. It's like this weird, crazy brain hack for parents where it lowers your reactivity, it boosts your self-awareness and helps you become more grounded and calm. And then we're going to mess up. We're human. So we really need this self-compassion piece enormously. But even the mindfulness comes before that too, because it, we talk about kind of taming that harsh inner voice. But if we're not even hearing that inner voice, you know, like we need to be able to see it. We can't change it if we don't see it. That's so, true. so part of it that. is to start to understand the tools that you can work with. You want to understand that like your you know, your nervous system stress response is just, this is like your biology. It just sees mm -hmm. things as a threat. And so we have to start to lower that stress response. So I guess I would invite people as like a place, a starting point is to think about how this idea that like, how can you lower your stress response? Mm -hmm. And there's some super simple ways to do that. Like breathing is cliche because it works. It because really it actually works. works. Yes. Yeah. So if you, take three deep, slow breaths. Like you can try even a, even a slower exhale. So you take a deep breath in for a kind of, four, four, let's do five. Deep breath in for five. Exhale for eight. We'll do one more time. Breathe in for five. Exhale for eight. And you can probably feel the difference. Yes. Right? Yes. And what's happening is so simple. Every time you do an inhale, it's a mini stress response in the nervous system. Every time you do an exhale, it's a mini rest and relax opposite response. So you're just simply like doing a longer exhale. So you have a longer rest and relax response. It's telling your body that there's no threat, that you can calm down and that you can take care of yourself. And, and a lot of us think, a lot of us parents, we think like, oh, I need to do all these things for my kids or for my house, or I need to get the dishes away and I need to do the laundry and all these things. And that's nope. what it's, that's what being a good mom is all about. But, but like you taking care of yourself, you feeling good, you yeah. taking time to lower your stress response by going for a walk by yourself by doing, you know, whatever it is that lowers your stress response, like talking to a friend, reading a good book on a hammock, like those things are not selfish at all. Like they are your responsibility because they're helping you to be more present, to be 
more available for everybody else. Ultimately, it's it's um, it's kind of this. We have this weird, you know, mommy thing where we're like, oh, she should be so unselfish, but it just is stupid because it leads to resentment and burnout. And who's <laughs> a good parent? So true. No one. So it's like it drives me crazy. Yeah, and and it's across the globe. It's across the globe. So my, my thing is, where did we go so wrong? that everybody in every country is suffering from almost the same mommy burn like uh it's it's amazing i want to read out the mindful parenting manifesto um because i love 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 it i really love it so so um hunter says a mindful parent is a new generation of parent present evolving calm authentic and free so free of what you're saying that that guilt that unnecessary thing right then you say that mindful parents reject the culture of not good enough. Oh my God, this hits mm. home so much. Knowing that when we free ourselves from unnecessary stress and limiting stories, our authentic, peaceful nature shines through. Mindful parenting practices self-compassion and see their challenges as teachers, not flaws. Beautiful. I want to ask you, how did this genius come about? <laughs> what? <laughs> say it again. How did, how did you come about this genius writing? Like, this is beautiful. Oh, oh, that's nice. Thank you. I don't know. I wanted to put it in one place. I saw, I saw someone else did a, a manifesto on something else. And I was like, I want a manifesto. So I just wrote a manifesto. It's <laughs> really beautiful. Then you say mindful parenting values wisdom over reactivity and empathy over obedience and begin anew every day. So you're giving yourself a permission that the day was done. You're given another chance. Start a new day. Start a new day. Start over, right? Mm -hmm. Then mindful parents go within and get quiet to ex uh, access their power. What you said, rest. So come from a place of rest. Um, your introduction in your podcast, uh, that 30-second introduction, uh, it's wonderful. It's exactly, you know, it beautifully. In 30 seconds, you describe everything that you do, everything that you stand for. And it's really good. I, I hear Whenever I hear your podcast, I really enjoy that 30 seconds of introduction. Oh, good. I say it fresh every single time. I yeah. don't know why. I like it too. It's, I it's, it's really nice. It's, it's really beautiful. So in, in your book, um, I want to touch upon this. You, you talk about on page 82, on which you talk about helping children through difficult feelings. And then you say expect and accept strong emotions. And then again, you give the tools to help children with strong emotions where you talk about tolerating tantrums. Staying with the tantrum, you say, and you say, tell a story. Um, so can you, can you touch upon, like, for example, we, we are um, drilled into the idea that tantrum is bad. Tantrum is wrong. And, and you've explained this and other authors have also explained this, the fight and the flight mode. And, you know, when the tantrum is happening and it's, it's, it's your trigger and something is happening. If you could tell that mom at that point, the tantrum is okay. How, how, do you, how, do you, how do you tell your audience that? Well, I mean, the thing about a tantrum to understand is that your kid's just like flooded with emotion and they really can't do anything else. They don't have the resources to do anything else. They don't have the brain development or the maturity to do anything else. They're immature by nature. And so they're releasing all these pent up feelings. There's nothing to do for a tantrum. You're not going to tell a child they're bad for having a tantrum because it's not, you can't really even say anything to a child with a tantrum anyway, you know, but you can give them a message about that. Like if you yell or you like stomp away or like it's, then you're teaching them that that tantrum is wrong. And what the message is, is that your big feelings are wrong. And so they'll try to do the thing we've done for generations, which is try to stuff it down. And then stuffing it down really doesn't work because it just pops up later. Like this is the root. I mean, not your child specific tantrum, but like this idea of like stuffing down our feelings and that having these big feelings is bad is the root of kind of like, if you look at almost every societal problem, yeah. that's where it is. Like we have no ability to, to tolerate our difficult feelings. But if we can say, if we can, I mean, and this is an if, because maybe you're triggered, right? Like, yeah, I was, I was going to come on that, that, yeah. that I've done this, that at times my children are calm and I'm having a tantrum. I'm having a normal conversation has changed into me being like going like 
what's the kinder word? There's no kinder word, berserks. <laughs> and my children are like, like looking in wonder, like what happened to this woman? <laughs> she just went from zero to hundred in a second. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing is like, we can't expect our kids to have better behavior than we have too. Right. You know, like they're way <laughs> immature, but, but yeah, I mean, for our own triggers, I mean, so, so sometimes when you're in a, t- your child's having a tantrum, it's triggering all these big feelings for you. And ideally, right. We'd, it'd be great if we were not, it wasn't a big deal for us. We could sit and tolerate those feelings. And then we'd give our kid the message that I love you no matter what, even though you have these big feelings. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's, wow, that's amazing. That's powerful. That's an amazing message to send. That's unconditional love. But sometimes you're like human and you're not going to be able to do that because your own stuff is triggered and that's okay. Then you just have to like remove yourself. You know, it's much better to say, whoa, I need a break from this and go take care of your own difficult feelings than to freak out at your kid. And then sometimes you're going to freak out but I'll give you the words to freak out skillfully. I did this a few months ago. Freak out skillfully, that's good. (laughs) My daughter, I had discovered a whole new trigger. I was like, oh, look at this. She laughed at me when I was really mad. And then I was like, she laughed at me. It was like a volcano. And so I yelled, but I yelled, I'm really angry right now. And so I've done that. I'm so angry. I'm going outside. And I slammed the door and I just like walked myself up and down the street until I could cool off. But I didn't say you're a blah, 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 blah. I said, I'm really angry right now. And so we can start to, we can start to own this and start to create a new patterns of, um, of, of more, um, better resilience, right? More emotional, you know, emotional stability for our kids. Like as we do this for ourselves, they learn that from us. That's that's definitely true. Why is it that we came to a point where we said emotions are bad? So, so we talk about love all the time. We celebrate all the occasions with hearts and rings and love and flowers and roses and balloons, but then we only want that one kind of emotion. And then we uh, disregard every other emotion what, when did that happen as a society? This is just me as a, as a human being thinking right now. Like when and why did that happen? Because we don't like ugly? Yeah, I mean, I think it makes sense. Like we're averse to things that don't feel good and we like things that do feel good, right? So it's like, it, it kind of stems from that, I think, ultimately. Yeah, uh, um, Jackie says same here. She uh, she she's resonating with with your with what you're saying. Um, Timmy, uh, she says these strategies work in all relationships. <laughs> like- yes, actually, yeah, <laughs> that's kind of the secret about raising good humans. That it's like kind of like I got these people in the mindful parenting membership are like, oh, my relationship with my partner has been improving. I'm like using these things, and I'm like, yeah. Mm-hmm kind of will yeah um that's as a- we can become more calm and we can become more grounded and have more equanimity we're able to just like hear each other more and, and see each other and and just be there for whatever's happening definitely definitely thank you so much Hunter, for uh for giving me your time um i apologize for the um, disconnect and this coming on live twice but um it was such a pleasure i was so looking forward to this um i appreciate your time i appreciate your book people please get this if you don't want to buy it get it from the library <laughs> i got my first the first time i read it i got it from the library then i bought it oh so. <laughs> good i'm glad it was in the library <laughs> yeah. yes it is it is easily available do you know when you um when you google positive parenting this is one of the first books that's come that comes up nice yes so, so it's working it's working <laughs> so, and um and um get to know you uh join your podcast so if, if you could just tell everybody okay. where to find you um you can find me at mindfulmamamentor.com the podcast is the mindful mama podcast Mm -hmm. Um, We just got over a million downloads. Uh, (laughs) Woohoo! And um, yeah, everything's at mindfulmamamentor.com. If you're interested in working with me or the podcast or the book, it's all over there. Oh, there was another uh, CS um, summit that you did. You were the host of that summit, right? Did you, the parenting summit that you did a a few months ago. 
Mm, I, I have uh, hosted some things. Yeah. Yes. I mean, yes. I'm not sure exactly what you're <laughs> I know you're busy. I know you're busy. <laughs> but that was a very good summit too. Actually, oh, in yeah, fact, yeah. Um, um, there were there were so many good speakers. Uh, Tina, uh, uh, Tina, Tina Payne, yes, and uh, Dr. Daniel Daniel. and yep 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 there there were so many of them so yeah that was really good I followed that one as well um I love your smile (laughs) thank you that was that was one of the things that made me go uh, okay you know what I'll just uh, sign up for that it's free it's okay I'll I'll sign up for it so it was your face basically it was a kind (laughs) smile mashallah okay so there's there's one thing Pfizer is one because there's a lag on 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 Facebook so this question Mm. I, I was going to wrap up but she says um I want to know how to come out of guilt of wrong parenting modeling. Mm, yeah. I mean, yeah, the guilt is, is tricky. I mean, the thing is, we, that's why I say we begin anew every day because we can't do anything about our past. We can't do anything about the way we were raised or what we are conditioned with or any of those things. Like we all have baggage in us and that all that conditioning and that's just there. You didn't choose it. You didn't choose to yell. No one like wakes up and is like, I think I'm going to just lose it at my kid at like three o'clock today. No, you don't do that. Right. So, so this is like our, we have this wiring for reactivity. We have all this baggage. We have all this stuff as if we understand that we can offer ourselves a lot of grace. We can offer ourselves some forgiveness and some compassion because that's just what's in us, right? And we can't just will that out. It actually takes tools and practices. Like it's not just something we can just hope we're calmer. It actually takes practice to kind of train the brain to become calmer. Like hoping is not a strategy. It's just, it's not. And, um, And for the guilt, you know, I think it's really powerful to to offer ourselves that forgiveness ourselves. Like I've offered, I've really forgiven my, my own family, my own father, you know, I, I know you that he that suffered that enormously yeah. and his father and so on down the line, like there's been all this suffering that has been passed on to us and it's not their fault that's been passed on to them. And so we can offer ourselves that compassion and we can just begin anew the next day. Like we can, we, we are a totally new person an hour from now. You can begin anew and just do the best you can from this point. Definitely. I would like to say when today I was listening to the latest podcast, you said something very powerful in that. And you said, listen, it was not our parents' fault and it was not their parents' fault and it is not our fault. And there's no blame. Like what, what you just said, you continued by saying that, but just saying this, that there is no blame to put, because as human beings, what, what do we want to do? What satisfies us is blame him, blame her, blame somebody else, point fingers. And then, you know, life becomes much more easier Then you can stay with that guilt or you can feel comfortable with that guilt. So um, I love it that, that you say that, listen, everybody had their part of baggage, not anybody's fault whatever they were suffering from they were suffering from they did what they needed to do you start in you like you say in your manifesto start start in you thank you uh once again uh, well, Laura, i don't want to end this conversation oh. <laughs> well, we'll <laughs> have to continue it on a walk someday and we'll leave. definitely uh thank um, you so much please go ahead you're going to no say no 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 I'm, just, I'm about to like make plans for our walk i don't know i'm sorry we can wait do that later <laughs> <laughs> no definitely um thank you once again uh everybody who has joined on uh facebook thank you so much and everybody who will join in later i hope that you send in comments you join um hunter's uh page her podcast her coaching group um one-on-one coaching whatever you think is needed for you please join it like she says you start a new but then again hope does does not carry you to another step you need somebody to guide you and i think hunter does that beautifully and um why not? Why not? Thank you so much, Iram. I really, really appreciate it. Good for, I, I appreciate you providing this, this bridge. It's really beautiful in this, this context and, and, and reaching out and it, it's, uh, it, it, I re- appreciate it enormously. Appreciate you too. Take care. Um, thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Hunter, we stay online. I, I just end the live. Okay. We stay online. <laughs> <laughs>